As you all probably remember, the first step is to create our geometry. Therefore, we double click on the geometry module. Just like the previous session, our primary object is a box. Therefore, we click on create and then go over primitives and then select box. Without changing any settings on the low left side of the software window, we simply click on generate button so that the software will create the box for us. Now that our box is generated, we simply close the Design Modeler software. After we close the Design Modeler software, it's time to open the ANSYS meshing software. Therefore, we double click on the mesh module. Now, in order to create a local setting, which is the local sizing, we have to right click on the mesh and then go over insert and then select sizing. But before selecting the geometry here, we are going to first suppress this sizing setting and then create an initial mesh with the global sizing over our geometry so that you can see the differences when we make changes to the sizing setting. Now that we've created our initial mesh over our geometry with the global settings, it's time to unsuppress the sizing setting and apply some changes. As was mentioned before, it's time to select an entity for our geometry. For example, for the first entity for the geometry, we have to select the vertex selecting command first and then click on one of the vertices of our box. After we selected that vertex of our box, we click on the apply button in front of our geometry. And then you will see that some changes under the definition section could be made automatically. The change that we are talking about happens in front of the type. You can see that when we select the vertex of our box, the option in front of the type would be changed from element size to a sphere of influence automatically and then you won't be able to change that. Next is the sphere radius. Because we have selected a vertex of our box, we can create a spherical region around that vertex so that we can make the missiles in that spherical region a smaller or bigger locally. Therefore, if we enter a value for the sphere radius, like 0.3 meter, you can see that a sphere will be generated around this vertex with a radius of 0.3 meter. As was mentioned in the previous slide, you can now see here that a sphere with the radius of 0.3 meter is shown over that vertex. As for the element size here, you can now change the size of elements and mesh cells inside the spherical region by entering any arbitrary value. Now if you change the element size to the value of 0.05 meter, and then click on generate button, you can see that the elements inside the spherical region would become smaller in comparison to the other elements outside the spherical box because the elements outside the spherical region obey the global element sizing equal to 0.15 meter. As you can see here, the elements inside the spherical region are obviously smaller than the elements outside this region. Now in order for you to better see the changes of elements inside the spherical region when we use the vertex sizing, we are going to generate tetrahedral mesh cells over our box. To do that, we simply right click on mesh, go over insert and then use method. As you all probably can remember, in order to create tetrahedral mesh over our body, we first have to select the geometry of our box. And then in front of the method, select tetrahedrals. And now when I click on the generate button, you can see that in the newly generated mesh, only the mesh cells inside the spherical region have become smaller. As was mentioned, as you can see here now, only the mesh cells around the selected vertex have become smaller. 